Hello, my name is Jeffrey Hernandez, and I worked with Christopher Clement to create the voice-controlled uh, VR application version 1.0. Uh, this video will go over some shortcomings and a wish list of things we might want to have included in the app in, in future iterations in later semesters. So we were able to build the app for the iPhone, and you know, while it functions, it's kind of behind visually and VR mode isn't implemented in that whereas we were able to get VR mode implemented in the Android app so there's just a little a little bit of work to be done on the iPhone side to get it caught up to the Android side so that both mobile platforms are uh, basically at the same spot um, as for WebGL uh, the browser build we weren't able to implement very much with that it's a much different environment um, I don't even think that the browser, uh, Unity browser apps have multi-threading enabled. So there's a bit of a challenge there when it comes to like enabling, uh, voice recognition and speech recognition. Um, we can't even access files that are on the local machine from the, the WebGL build. Actually, I can go ahead and show you that real quick. This is, this is what it looks like, um. The buttons work, like the app is, is there, it's responsive, but like we can't get into any files from my computer. It's, yeah, it doesn't have access to that. So figuring out a solution for that, uh, that's what we're looking for there in the WebGL build. Um, that's important too, because the WebGL build can be embedded into browsers with iframes. And uh, by doing that, you can essentially just embed it into Canvas. And that way students can go ahead, access Canvas, and our app is just right there. So that's definitely good. We that this The WebGL build definitely needs uh, a lot more work. Um, yeah, publishing our applications to all the available stores, for example, the the Android build being published to the Play Store and the iOS build being published to the App Store, and even like a, a, a Windows build being published to the Windows Store would be good. That way, the application can be easily found and downloaded by any student that wants it on pretty much any platform. Uh, let's see, what else? Yeah, so we have a pretty nearly complete implementation uh, for the user stories that we were given for Windows 10. But when it comes to Linux, we uh, we don't have we didn't have the system we didn't have the hardware to test it on. But I imagine at this point it it wouldn't take much. I wouldn't take many changes to get it work working on Linux. So uh, that'd be pretty easy. Same same goes for um, Mac OS. We weren't we didn't have a device to test it on that. So so that'd be a good place to go. Maybe in a future iteration. Uh, we weren't able to record any of our own 360 videos. Uh, the product owner was considering a camera to purchase, but we kind of uncovered a bit more information and details about the different VR formats and that, you know, that complement, that complicated the, the situation a little bit more. So there was some more consideration to be made there. But if we had access to our own 360 camera and we can, you know, make our own videos in house, we could... We could test the application a lot more thoroughly. We can find out which videos work and which videos don't. And we can see the different outputs from the different cameras that are available possibly if we had, you know, different types of cameras. Um, yeah, we got, we got the mobile platforms pretty far along, but we weren't able to get voice, uh, voice speech recognition working on them. Uh, as far as I can tell, as far as we can tell is that speech recognition is going to be, the implementation for it is going to be different from platform to platform. Uh, so that's going to complicate the, the, the code a little bit as we add more platforms to the project. There are a few um, platforms that, you know, cover multiple, pla there are a few uh, solutions that cover multiple platforms, uh, like some plugins that would work maybe on all platforms, but you have to pay for the plugin or you have to pay for the service or, you know, when you issue a voice command, that's essentially a request to a server on a cloud service and you have to pay per each request. So that's, that's something to be considered in terms of price and other things like that. So yeah, vo voice control definitely needs more work for 
all the other platforms besides Windows, which is the only one that it currently works on. Um, and there are a couple user stories, a couple important ones that we weren't able to, you know, finish out. Things like, for example, annotation. We wanted, we want there to be a feature so that, like, professors can create a video and then add annotations or little comments or descriptions in the video. And also so that students can leave annotations or comments and then we can generate some sort of comment section on these videos and have more of a discussion around them for teaching purposes. And this, you know, going further with this, there was ideas of creating an, an editor for the app, basically, so that you can put the video into the app and edit it right then and there, you know, cut out pieces that you want, zoom in and out, add notes, annotations, transitions, and all sorts of effects. That That's going to be a that would be a big, a big uh, chunk of work to undertake, but yeah, annotation falls under there. And then for continuous integration and continuous uh, deployment, there were some issues with Unity. We were trying to use uh, Azure DevOps to to implement our CI/CD, but when it comes to Unity, uh, it to be able to build the actual application you need to have Unity installed and you have to be able to pull it up graphically. You have to be able to pull up the GUI to do it. Uh, well, you have to be able to pull up the GUI so that you can you can verify your license. That way you can build it. But that's only possible with Unity Pro and that costs somewhere like 30, 30 something dollars a month. Uh, we just found that we didn't absolutely need that. We could just push all the code to a repository, then download the code and build it on our machines. But if you wanted to have a full CI CD pipeline going on, it would take a bit of work. You would either have to pay for Unity Pro or you would have to, using Azure DevOps, you would have to set up your own uh, job agents and put them into an agent pool. And your your machines would have to be running in order to, in order to pick up those jobs to build the application. Um, it's, it's a bit of work. It, we found that it wasn't absolutely necessary, but for later semesters, as the project gets bigger, this might become a more important issue, and this would have to be tackled. So just keep in mind, you might be looking at Unity Pro or you running your own Azure DevOps agents on your own computer. And making the UI hide itself, that was a... That was the user story that came near the end during the final iteration. Uh, we just didn't have a lot of time to do everything to completely implement everything. We did most of the UI stuff, but this would be a good one to have the UI hide itself. You know, uh, maybe you could just tap the screen and the UI disappears, and then you tap it to make the UI reappear. Uh, it would just be good to free up some space on the screen so that you could see the video better, you could see it more clearly, and there's just less clutter for the user. Um, as far as I know, every video player has a feature like that. The controls don't stay up on the screen permanently. So this was this is one that we weren't able to implement, but it would be a good one to do. Uh, definitely definitely important for user experience. Um, and that's about it. I mean, we had lots of other little ideas throughout the semester, but we didn't necessarily make them into user stories. We didn't necessarily commit to doing any of that stuff. But this is the this is important. These things here should be become priority at some point in the near future. So that's about it for our wish lists uh, shortcomings. Uh, thank you for watching.